So a new batch of PCBs has arrived um, for a, a project that I'm about to start uh, start doing. And in the time it took me to get from my uh, front door to my kitchen, I'd already ripped off the padded bag that these boards were shipped in and was hacking away at the uh, plastic wrapper that they used to wrap um, the boards in with some kind of uh, totally inappropriate tool like my front door key before I stopped myself and um, thought, why not go through these together? Let's have a look, let's inspect them and do a bit of an unboxing. So, although I've already ripped off the plastic, um, I haven't inspected the boards yet. Let's have a look at them and see see how they uh, how they're doing. Um, I'm particularly interested in in these because it's the first uh, two layer set of boards that I've got from from JLC PCB. Uh, the last ones I had were four layers, and the quality, as you can see in one of my previous videos, was extremely high. And it's, it'll be good to see whether they can um, they can sort of carry over that uh, quality level to the uh, two layers as well. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Now, first of all, let's see how many they ship. I mean, in these batches, I've had anywhere between the 10 that I ordered and um, 13, I think, is the most I've ever had. What have we got here? Three, six, uh, nine, 10. Exactly what I ordered. No freebies there. Um, <laughs> no, I don't care for, you know, I've only paid $2 for this batch. Um, let's have a look at the boards themselves. Okay, so the first thing I want to check is some custom footprints on here that I've built. Um, I got um, these CR1220 uh, battery holders, uh, button battery holders on eBay, and I noted that the, the footprint looked remarkably similar to um, some that you can get on Mouser and DigiKey. So I kind of did some um, you know, rough and ready measuring with some calipers and figured out that they probably were the same footprint. And um, it's, uh, basically I uh, made that footprint and put it on this board. So let's see if let's see if these actually fit. These uh, CR1220 holders have a uh, little sort of like protrusion plastic um, button knob things on the bottom, like little spikes that go through just to hold it in place uh, while uh, so it doesn't rip off when you insert the battery. And let's see if it fits in in the little holder here. Yes, it does. That's good. It's nice and firm as well. I copied the footprint exactly. Sometimes I enlarge the holes that they recommend just in case to allow for slop in the manufacturing process. But that, that's good, that holds fine, and the two little tabs are um, exactly on the, um, on, on the pads there at the end, so that's going to be good. The other one that has mounting holes on here that I want to check is the USB-B connector, um, mini B connector here. That has uh, similar little plastic um, spikes on the bottom to hold it, from, you know, to hold it in place, as uses stuff cables in and out. Let's see if that fits in there. Yes, it does. That's nice. I did enlarge this one slightly, and it's um, it's okay. It's got virtually no slop. Once I've got the these uh, little pads fully covered up in solder, that'll be nice. It holds well, and it fit, it looks like it's positioned correctly. It doesn't stick out too much from the edge of the board. Um, in case you're wondering, this is a, de a development board for um, an STM32, um, one of the one of the new Cortex M0 Plus. I see. They look quite interesting. I normally use the M0s, but the M0 Plus looks quite interesting, and there aren't many. And dev boards available for it, so I thought I'd build one. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail about what the, how, what's on this board at this moment. I'll do another video on that and the, uh, on the building of the board and what it's um, what it provides later. Just now, I don't, I'm only going to go through the quality of the manufacturing at the moment. So those those are good. I've checked that out. Next thing I want to do is check the silk screen and um, the drill drill holes and all that kind of stuff, and compare it to how good the uh, four layer board was. So for that, I'm going to need my macro lens. And I'll just swap over to that right now. Right, I'm back with the macro lens attached and so we can see a bit more detail here. Um, one thing I just want to clear up um, is that this video is not sponsored by JLC PCB. If you have a YouTube channel, um, you will know that the um, PCB manufacturers, at least half a dozen of them um, anyway, will contact you via YouTube or your blog and they will offer you freebies in exchange for videos and reviews. Um, as yet, I have never accepted any of those. If I ever do, um, I don't really tout in the future, you know, never say never and everything, I will include a disclaimer at the beginning of the video and in the text below so that you know that um, I've received incentives to do a video. But um, it would it just compromises and taints the entire video. So I, I don't think I'll ever accept the freebies. I'll just stick to paying for it. It's not like they're exactly expensive. Um, so anyway, on with the um, review. Let's carry on. Let's have a look at the solder mask first because I found the solder mask on the four layer board, which if I can just find it over here. Yeah, here's one. Um, was extremely good. I'm going to try and track this with a macro lens. So hopefully it'll stay in focus. Um, what, what I really noticed was that around the um, ICs, in particular the ones with the half millimeter pitch pins, the solder mask was completely intact, which is something that um, I've never seen before from the PCB manufacturers. Um, let's go back to the uh, two layer board. It's a different color because there's a flood fill of copper on the top. 
Um, these four layer board I don't bother with uh, the flood fill because it, I've got so many so much space on the interior layers I don't need to have it on top and bottom as well. Um, let's see if they've managed to do it on top as well and following in with the macro lens can it can it possibly get it? Yes it can and yes I can see that even on the preview screen on the back of the camera I'm um, sorry if it's out of focus in any way because the depth of field on these uh, macro lenses is extremely shallow. Um, the solder mask is completely intact between those pins. Um, I think that's really important because of uh, the way I build my boards. I um, tin the pads and then I place the components on top and then I place them into my reflow oven um, and I leave them there for, for the re reflow cycle. And um, basically it's all, uh, I, need those, uh, I need that solder mask intact so that I don't get bridges between the, uh, the different pads. Um, now what this, what this means is that they've ignored the instructions in the Gerber for the solder mask um, expansion uh, rules that I set. Um, in the design package I have, I set the solder mask expansion to be, I think it's, it's um, from the design rules, it's 4 mil roughly. Um, which would mean that uh, 4 mil from the side of one of those half mil pads uh, combined with 4 mil from the uh, adjacent pad would result in an extremely thin sliver of solder mask, if any at all. Um, but I, I have, it's all intact here, which means they've ignored it. There, yeah, that's better. It should be a bit more steady on your eyes watching this. Um, I do apologise for the macro lens jumping all around with the focus. It, it just, the way it happens, it finds it hard to hold the um, focus when the depth of field is so shallow. It's better if I keep it still like this. Um, so yes, I was saying the, um, you know, the, the, the design house has obviously got so much faith in their um, positioning of the accuracy of the solder mask that they've just ignored the rules that I sent and they've um, put the mask uh, so close to the pads um, that it, it's great for me, I'm happy they've done this. Um, they've, put it, they've put the uh, mask as, as close to the pads as they can possibly get and it means that um, I'm going to be able to build this uh, with confidence. Um, and let's have another look at uh, some of the bits in there. If I look, if actually, I, you can probably see better than me, but it looks like, yeah, those holes um, that are, the, the holes there that are used to uh, steady the, um, the battery holder from slipping, they're non-plated. Now, I didn't specify that in my, um, in my design files or anything like that. Often you need to include um, an NPTH, non-plated through hole file, to specify that uh, holes should be uh, non-plated. Um, I'm quite pleased that they've done that. Um, there was no instructions on the JLC site for how to specify non-plated through holes. Um, but it looks like they've noticed that these drill holes have no annular ring around them, like a, so they're not a wire, obviously, and they haven't plated the through holes. That's, um, well, that's interesting. <laughs> I, I guess they just must have something in their software that spots those. And yeah, they've done the same here. The, um, the the the, uh, the the mounting pin holes for the USB connector they're also non-plated um, and they have the same uh, they, you know in the in the, the uh, design files they would have no annular ring around them so they're obviously not, not a via and you can see by contrast these these holes here for the little reset switch they do have a ring around them they're not vias but they do have a ring around um, so that I can solder the the um, switch in and they are plated um, so interesting I guess the the um, Key is, if you're using JLC and you want non-plated through holes, just don't include an annular ring around them and you get them automatically. Okay, fine. Oh, and that's nice. There's the little serial number. Um, all of these cheap board houses include um, a serial number um, so that they can identify different customers. And they, uh, for JLC, if you, if you want to specify where the serial number is going to be, you put um, some text on the board, JLC, 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 JLC. It's in their FAQ, you can look for it. Um, but the key is you also need to tell them if you, if you don't tell them that you've put the, um, the, the, that, that text somewhere on the board, they won't go looking for it and you will get the um, serial number in a random place. This time they've um, picked up on it. I did include the note and it's in the right place. So it will be hidden underneath the um, battery holder there. Uh, quick look at the other side. Um, as usual, back sides are never that much in, that, that's interesting because all the uh, good stuff's on top. Everything looks fine. Vias look tented. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't ask for tented vias, um, on the bottom anyway. I'll have to check my design files again. The, the, yeah, the mask is over the vias there. That's slightly annoying because um, you don't usually want tented vias unless you ask for them. Vias make good test points. Yes, they are on top as well. They're tented, yeah, they're tented. They're, the mask definitely goes over them. I mean, the masks actually fall into them. They're not properly tented. 
I'll need to check my design file to see if I specified that. Um, yeah, that's something to be be aware of. Um, I don't normally, yes, I don't normally want vias to be tented because um, particularly where you've got serial protocols and things, it's very useful to be able to stick a probe in um, and trace trace your signals when you're debugging. That's something I'll need to check on my design files, but I'm pretty sure I didn't say tented. It's something that um, is off by default for me and I um, only specify it when I want it. Yeah, so bear that in mind. Okay, so I think we've gone over the uh, board enough. There's not much else to see. It's just a, a development board that breaks out everything to uh, pin headers and it's um, designed to fit on um, uh, breadboards. Uh, next thing, uh, I'll build this board and we'll do a building of the board and a testing it video. So I'll sign off now and we'll um, continue in the next video.